Hello, in this tutorial I will show you how to paint the flip-flops on the shoreline. I'm going to start out by showing you the water line that is hitting the shore. So we have this diagonal line that is happening in this painting and the placement of that line. So uh, my hand is over here, so it's about five fingers from the bottom of the canvas and the corner. So with a pencil, I'm going to go ahead and draw this line and this is going to help us with the painting. So about five fingers up and right there on that corner. And I'm going to connect those two areas with a sort of wavy line. And um, then I'm going to do the flip flop template. So this is the template that is available to print. So you're going to print it out on a standard size computer paper. And before cutting it out, I recommend turning it on the other side and using just a regular black pen to trace it. And I'll show you in a second why I am doing this. Um, so I'm tracing what I see on the opposite side. So it's showing through and I'm just tracing it on the back side. So I have a flip flop on the front and the back. So um, now I have it on both sides and I'm gonna cut this out. So this flip flop is going to be used for both the right and left foot. I'm just going to um, turn it over as I trace it. And um, that is what I did. So I cut out the flip flop and it, it's on both sides. And I use that to trace onto the canvas. So the placement of the shoe is under, um, the line that we drew. So we have that shoreline and we're going to place the flip flop so that it is uh, partially covering the shoreline at an, it's at an angle and it's kind of, it's hanging off the canvas too. Okay, so it's kind of far to the left, it's diagonal, it's hanging off the canvas, about three or four fingers off the canvas, and the, the toe part is covering that shoreline because part of that shoreline is um, going to kind of slightly cover those flip-flops. So um, the graphite transfer paper is what I'm using, shiny side down, and I'm just basically tracing the template Okay, so to get the right foot, I um, turn the flip flop over and we have the mirror image of it. So I'm going to do that again. And this one is kind of at an angle too. It's still overlapping that shoreline that we drew at the toe part. And it is for the most part on the canvas. So we, we almost see the full entire shoe for this. And the nice thing about using a cutout instead of a whole paper is that we can um, get in there and really um, get the placement of it right. So if I did not cut this traceable out, it might be kind of a challenge to do that. So that's why I cut it out. And instead of using two traceables, one for the left foot, one for the right, um, it's easiest to trace it on the back and you just turn it over. Okay, so this one we see the full shoe here, but this one we don't have enough room to see the full shoe. And um, that's kind of the point, um, to have them kind of interesting and kind of hanging off and going off the canvas there. So this one is still at an angle, and so I'm tracing it. And um, I know it gets kind of tricky because you gotta trace the outside of it because you're, you're tracing the shape, but then you also gotta trace the top part of where the top the plastic part of the flip-flop is that holds our feet onto the shoe. Okay, so uh, we're gonna get started with the painting part of this tutorial. And the colors that you're gonna need are bright aqua green and unbleached titanium. You'll also need a three quarter inch flat brush. Dip it in the water and pat it dry so that it is wet but not dripping wet. And this helps um, with the initial flow of the paint when you dip it in the water and pat it dry like that. And start with the bright aqua green and I just loaded it onto my brush and I'm painting diagonally because that is the direction of the shoreline. 
So I'm painting um, horizontally or uh, perpendic perpendicular, parallel <laughs> to the shoreline. And I am not going to go all the way to that line because you can see that um, about four fingers of that is white. So I'm going to kind of estimate about four fingers um, parallel to that line and I'm going to draw a wavy line. And everything above that line is going to be solid bright aqua green. And I'm going to stop and not paint any more bright aqua green below that line. And if you're using a stretched canvas, now is the time that you can paint the sides of it. So if you have any leftover bright aqua green paint on your palette, go ahead and use that up to paint the sides. This painting looks really lovely on the stretched canvas when the colors are painted on the side. All right, so that's what I am doing there. I'm just filling that in with the sides and kind of um, touching it up a little bit. This bright aqua green is a nice opaque color, so you don't really need to add a second or third coat. At least I did not do that. Okay, so next what you're gonna do is you're gonna rinse off your brush and we're gonna paint um, below that line, but we're gonna paint it with unbleached titanium. And that is because um, the white is going to be translucent and you'll, you're will you gonna see some of the sand underneath the water. So there's sand there. And so this is the unbleached titanium and I'm gonna paint around the flip flops and everything from um, that line and to the line that we drew with the pencil, so the, to the shoreline, okay? So this is gonna stay the sand color for a while and we're not gonna do the white till the very end because the white is on the very top of the painting and it's overlapping that everything that's on the sand right now. So this is kind of the under layer, the bottom, the underneath part of the water where we see the sand. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going around the flip-flop. If you need to switch to a smaller brush because you want to get into some of the um, smaller areas, you can. And also, so this unbleached titanium um, is allowed to blend with the bright aqua green a bit. In fact, I recommend that you kind of do that. So just paint over it slightly so that it blends um, a bit. So it kind of has a smooth transition and it's not just a solid line. And um, the these two colors, the bright aqua green and the unbleached titanium, they actually um, blend very nicely together and they make a very pretty color when they uh, mesh together like that, okay? So just kind of use the tip of your brush to outline the tips of the flip flops to get into the smaller areas and of course switch to a smaller brush if you need to. And I'm going to go silent here for just a few seconds while I finish that up and do the sides. Okay, next you're gonna need to load onto your palette the color Burnt Umber, which is a dark brown color. And we are going to mix um, a little bit of that Burnt Umber with the Unbleached Titanium, but I'm not gonna blend it all the way on my palette. On my brush, I guess you can call this a double loaded brush. It has the unbleached titanium and it's got a little bit of that burnt umber because this bottom part of the sand, I intended it to be a little darker because the water hits the sand and it's a little darker because it's wet. So um, that's what I'm doing here. I'm filling in all of this and I need a little bit of water to that to get it to flow a bit better there. And um, the direction of my strokes are kind of contouring with the shape of the flip flop. Um, because if you think about it, the sand is kind of um, being pulled back into the ocean. So it's not gonna be this perfect um, 
a parallel layer of sand. It's just going to be kind of going in all different kind of swirled directions. So I'm using the tip of that three quarter flat and I'm kind of waving it around the flip flop and it helps too because you have to outline the flip flop because we're going around the flip flop. So you got to um, kind of cut in with the, the tip of your brush to get it to um, go around the shape and then you kind of contour it and you fill in the rest of the area. Um, the negative space. So the flip flops are the positive space and we have the negative space around the flip flop that we're doing. Okay. And I'm not letting the color become one solid brown. I like the interesting look of um, how the brown is lighter in some areas and a little bit darker in some other areas. Okay. So I'm just doing that, filling it in. And again, use a smaller brush if you need to fill it in, especially um, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush here in just a little bit to fill in that area that, that you see. Um, there's like a little tiny uh, crevice uh, on the, the plastic part of the flip flop. So this is the number four bright brush. It's a smaller flat brush. And I'm going to use that to get into some of the smaller areas here. So everything kind of below that shoreline is this slightly darker brown color. And um, I suppose you can do without uh, making that sand darker. You can actually essentially make it the same color that we did. So just the unbleached titanium if you're simplifying things. So everything from um, basically where that bright aqua green stops to um, the unbleached titanium the whole area down there can be the same color um, but that's I just did it this way and there's a little crack that's the little um, crevice I was talking about where that plastic part of the flip-flop is so we see um, the sand through that area and then fill up this upper right corner here. Um, so the step after this step is going to require using a round brush. So I'm gonna switch to a number four round brush here after. I do the sides. Okay, so whatever's left in the palette, I'm going to do the sides. And actually, I'm going to kind of make sure that the flip-flops that are hanging off the canvas, that they get painted um, that color. So I just kind of uh, fast-forwarded that there. But here is the round brush. So next, we're going to do the, the shadows of the flip-flops. And this part really helps to get those flip-flops look um, like they are on the sand because they have the shadow. And... Um, I am going to do a darker kind of brown for the shadow. I'm just getting these paint brushes out of my water here so they're not sitting in the water whole t the whole time. So I got my number four round brush. I'm going to wet it. And I'm going to slightly, um, I'm going to kind of mix that brown with the unbleached titanium. But it's going to be darker than the sand color that I was doing and slightly watered down. So when I'm dipping my brush in the water, I'm not drying it down. I'm letting the water and the brush kind of water that paint down because this is, needs, this is going to be a thin layer of paint, but it's darker. Okay, so if it was thick and solid and not watered down, it would not give the same kind of effect here. Um, so I'm going to uh, outline that line. So with the round brush, I'm painting that shoreline because that's the shadow of the water that is hitting the shore of the sand. And then we have the shadow of the flip flops that are on the ground and I'm painting those. So only on the left side. So not around the entire flip flop, only on the left side, we see that shadow. Okay, so the left side of this flip flop. So whatever lines are on the left side, that's what I'm outlining, the outside part next to the flip flop, not the inside part, just the outside part. 
and just the left side. And I know, I know I am forgetting the tips, the toe part of the flip-flops that are overlapping the shoreline. I forgot to do that in this recording and I end up doing that in a later step. So if you wanna go ahead and outline that part too, or you can wait and, and do it when I do it so you can see how I do it. Okay, so what I'm doing next is kind of optional. I'm going back in and adding a little bit more um, of the lighter color on my palette, the lighter with a little bit more of unbleached titanium, and I'm blending it back into the sand. This just gives a little bit more um, um, interest in the shadow, kind of blends it in with the rest of the sand, uh, makes it look a teeny bit more realistic. Um, of course, you don't have to do this. It'll still give the same effect. It'll still look like there's a shadow, but I like to um, go ahead and blend that in a little bit. So that's what I'm doing there. Blending it in simply by doing wet on wet blending with the, a little bit more of unbleached titanium so that that um, burnt umber color shadow kind of blends in uh, with the color of the sand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that again with the ocean line. Okay. So we have the shadow of the ocean line and the shadow of the flip flops. All right, now is the fun and easy part. We get to paint the actual flip-flops. And um, the colors that I'm using, I started with the flip-flops on the left, and those are primary red flip-flops with um, my number 12 flat brush. And I'm basically going to paint that in with that color. That's all I'm doing is filling it in. Um, so using the full width of the brush, uh, kind of getting my strokes to contour with the shape. Um, the strokes are not all going in the same direction. They're kind of curving and going with the shape of the flip flop. And just filling this in. The primary red is a little bit translucent, so it needs a second coat. And um, I, don't remember if I show it on the video or not of me doing a second coat or not, but just keep in mind that if you're doing primary red, yours might need a second coat because it's kind of a, a bit of a see-through color. Okay, so with these, I am going around the plastic part of the flip-flop. Um, you don't have to, especially if you traced it pretty dark and um, you still see those lines, then you can most certainly just paint over it because then we can um, paint the plastic part over it anyway. But for now, I'm going around it so I still see that shape so that when I'm ready to paint that shape in, I know where it is. Okay, so um, I am going to do the other flip-flop, the one on the right with the same color, and I'm actually going to go silent here for a bit while I do that. So the same thing. Okay, so I mentioned earlier when I did the shadows that I didn't do the toe part of the shadow, and I'm gonna do that here. So I'm doing the same uh, mixture uh, with the watered down with the round brush, and I'm doing it on the left part of the toe part of the shoe, but I'm not doing the whole thing, so I'm gonna start um, I'm going to stop right in the middle. So it kind of gets thick and a little bit thin right there in the middle of the flip-flop. So we have the rest of the shadow um, 
of the flip-flop. So we would see some of that shadow under that because that part above, um, that part of the area is where the water is overlapping and we would see it. Okay, um, the other pair of flip-flops I did with Brilliant Yellow Green. This is this um, very bright green, lime green color. Uh, still with the 12 flat. This one also is a kind of translucent color, so you may need to add a second coat. And also, I got a little lazy here and did not fully go around the flip-flop part, the um, plastic part of the flip-flop that holds your foot on there. And um, so I painted over that, but also because this green is such a light color that even if you do paint over it, um, even with two coats, you would still be able to see, as long as you traced it pretty dark, you should still be able to see that line. So when we go and paint that part in, we'll be able to see that. So that's why I'm painting over that. So I'm going to do that with both the shoes. And I am going to go silent here again while I finish up painting the green shoes. Okay, so now we have the bottom part of the flip-flops and we're gonna do the um, designs next. And I know those colors uh, flashed across your screen, but I am mixing together phthalo blue and bright aqua green with my number four flat brush. And that's what I'm doing here with the pattern. I'm doing the chevron zigzag design. So I mixed about um, unequal parts, a little bit more bright aqua green than the thalo blue because thalo is such a dark color and I didn't want it to be that dark, but um, that's what I did. I mixed the two colors together to make this new kind of teal color for the chevron design. And I'm using the four bright brush to do those designs. I'm using the tip of the brush, different angles to paint the zigzags. This is going mighty fast here, but it's, it's super simple. Um, just when you do the designs, I mean, you can copy my designs, but you can think of other um, interesting flip-flop designs. You can go on Google and just type in um, flip-flop clip art or cute flip-flop clip art and you can see um, different kinds of um, different patterns you can do and you can come up with some different colors as well. So just make sure that the bright, um, brilliant, um, brilliant yellow green, the color that you painted the flip flop, that's gotta be dry first before you put the designs on that. So I didn't mention that before I did the designs. Okay. So as I finish up these zigzags, I'm gonna go silent here again. Just make sure if you are doing the zigzags, just kind of be careful to make it look like they uh, go as far to the left and right as possible. So, um, but we're not trying to make the zigzag go off of the flip-flop. So it's gotta go um, basically from the very edge of the shape to the other edge side of the shape. Um, so, okay, so I'm going to go silent here. For the primary red flip-flops, those have little white p 
polka dots and I use the back of the paintbrush handle to stamp on the polka dots with titanium white. So that is what I'm doing there, just stamping the little dots. And every once in a while it helps to wipe the handle off and then uh, redo the dots so you have a nice um, fresh dot. Sometimes the paint starts to clump on the handle and then it doesn't create the perfect little dot. You have to wipe it off every once in a while. I find that helps. Okay, and so next we're ready to paint the top parts of the shoe, the plastic part. And I did that with a round brush and the shoes on the right were done with phthalo blue. Again, make sure those designs are dry. Um, if yours is not dry, it's a good time. You can um, take a break or get a hair dryer and dry it real quick. Um, Mine dr dried very fast because I'm working in an open area with the ceiling fan on and I have lights and those lights are kind of warm and my painting is drying fast. Um, but you may be in a different environment where your paint is not drying very fast. It might be very humid where you are. Um, so you're going to have to kind of control that by um, using a hair dryer to dry it fast or taking some breaks and coming back to it. So you kind of know that um, if you painted and it wasn't dry, it would mix together and we don't want that. Okay, so all I'm doing is painting that shape in. I see the line that I drew initially when I trace the flip-flop, I still see that. You may not see it on the video, but I can see it um, very well in person. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just filling it in with the round brush, getting it filled in. And we're, our flip-flops are coming together here. They're looking like real flip-flops. That round brush really helps to get um, into those uh, smaller areas and it's a curved shape so we get it um, nice and filled in there. So the shoes on the left, I actually used a different color. I'm going to rinse my brush off all the way and I used the color Deep Violet for those shoes. So I rinsed all that phthalo blue off of there, kind of patted it dry, and then now I'm on the deep violet. So I'm doing the same exact thing and filling it in. So I'm gonna go silent here again. So I'm, all I'm doing is filling in that shape and I will um, explain the next step after that. Okay, next I'm gonna do a highlight line with titanium white and I'm gonna do this while my color is still wet. So on the right side of that plastic part, 
I'm just going to do a white line using the tip of my round brush. Do a very um, gentle white line and let it blend with that purple that is not dry. So that is our highlights. We have shadows on the left, highlights on the right. And do it so it's not like completely covering all the right side, but it's kind of very gentle and subtle. It blends a bit and I didn't even rinse my brush off. I know I had a little bit of purple left on that brush, but that's okay. So I'm doing it on the phthalo blue side as well. The phthalo blue is also not dried all the way. I'm just doing a very light, faint line on the right side. And you'll see here when I zoom out, um, kind of what that does here. And I'm just gonna kind of do a few more streaks here and there. Maybe there's some texture on that flip flop. But now we, uh, we can kind of see what's happening here. The flip flops are starting to pop up and I am using my hair dryer because I'm doing the plumerias next and the water as well. And I really need to make sure that everything's very dry, especially for these plumerias. So next I'm gonna show you how to do these plumerias and um, they're actually really simple. Um, I'm not a flower painter, so I always, uh, have trouble with flowers but I actually like how these plumerias turned out. Plumerias are one of my favorite flowers because I love all tropical flowers. Um, actually my favorite flower is the hibiscus but plumerias are a close second. So okay so what I'm doing with primary white is I am painting five petals and um, these ones kind of got uneven here. So, um, but the plumerias have five petals and they're kind of um, a teardrop shape, but they're pointed at the tip. And I'm going to have the first um, base layer of all these petals be solid white. So that was pretty easy. I just, with my round brush, I um, drew the petals out and now I'm just painting them in solid white. Okay, I'll make sure the tip of the um, petals are kind of pointed so it almost looks like a star. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other shoe. So I'm going to use my brush to paint four petals. And you could use a piece of chalk too to draw it out with chalk first if you feel more confident doing it that way. And um, I'm doing this. This is um, the third time I'm doing this painting so I um, kind of didn't really need the chalk part but you can use a piece of chalk to draw it out and I'm um, doing the five petals again um, thinking in terms of a star so the way a star would look with the point at the top and then um, the diagonals but there's five points Okay, so the color you're gonna need next is primary yellow. I'm just filling these in, making sure that they're actually very solid white here. But you will need primary yellow next. Okay, just a little tiny bit, not a lot of primary yellow. So you don't need to load your palette with a big glop, just a, a really tiny bit of yellow there. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the inside of these petals, but I'm not gonna paint the whole thing yellow. I'm just gonna paint kind of, um, like a smaller petal on the inside of it, but it's not another petal. It's just the yellow part of the petal. Okay, so five pointed teardrop sort of shapes on the inside of each of those petals and it's okay if that white is not dry all the way and actually it's beneficial so that it blends just a little bit I'm not really doing purposeful blending right now I'm just painting over it so same thing over here five petals of course, keep in mind that my painting is drying a little faster because I have the ceiling fan on and I have um, warm lighting. Okay, so yours may not be drying that fast. 
Okay, so primary red, this definitely will show up. Um, so what I'm doing with the primary red is I, I'm gonna move my hand here. So I'm kind of doing the same thing, but smaller, but um, it's kind of a mesh. So I'm just kind of maybe um, painting like an asterisk. And then I'm gonna outline the right part of the petal with the primary red. And I know that went really fast, but I'm gonna repeat it on the other one. So I'll make a little tiny star starburst in the middle. And then um, this one actually happened on the left side of the petal. Petal. So pick one side of the petal and outline each of those on the same one and then go around clockwise outlining the same um, side of that line. And that gives you the plumeria shape of how the petals are. So then I'm gonna go back with titanium white and I'm gonna outline what I did with the primary red so that that outline looks white. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm outlining each of those primary red outlines with titanium white. It's blending with the primary red and it's creating that plumeria effect. <laughs> and then what I did next with um, the um, deep violet is I made it just a little dot right in the center with a deep violet, okay? So just two little dots right in the center and we have ourselves a, a plumeria, <laughs> okay? So this is the step we've all been waiting for. We need our three quarter inch flat in titanium white, and we're gonna paint a translucent layer of paint that is going over the flip flops, okay? So titanium white, water it down to like an ink consistency and paint over. So you want to do this kind of gently because see how that's see-through? If it's not see-through, then add a little bit more water to it. Um, the water is ink consistency. It's not dripping, but it's not thick either. So it's a nice thin layer. And um, I didn't want to cover those plumerias, so I purposely made the, the sea foam. We're going to call this sea foam go around the plumerias as if they're invincible or something, but I didn't want to cover my plumerias. But um, essentially the whole point is that the whole area um, down there that was left sand color is now going to be translucent white because that's the sea foam. Okay, so I'm just putting a little bit more water in my brush there to get maybe a thinner layer and I'm just very gently like I'm not even pressing very hard with this brush I'm just brushing very lightly especially since I want to make sure that this is a nice see-through layer I should see tight um, the unbleached titanium below it I should definitely see flip-flop below it and go to that shadow line remember we painted that sh shadow line um, of the shore so it goes right to the edge of that shadow line so it looks like that shadow is underneath that translucent white layer okay so right there with that shallow shadow line is is the um, shadow of the sea foam okay so that is that magical step that looks hard, but it's not hard. It's super easy and it's like, whoa, I just painted sea foam and it was hard, but it really wasn't hard. Okay, so next I have my four round brush and I'm just gonna kind of gently paint these wispy, wavy lines that are going parallel to the shore and these are um, of course the water lines so we have some water texture in there and just kind of gently wisp it there with that watered down white and some might be a little brighter so i'm going to press a little harder on my brush here but don't do too many don't do go too crazy because we want that um, to be mostly aqua color and not white and maybe we'll have some lines on the shore and on the tip of the shoreline right there, kind of like how that looks right there, outlining the shoreline, kind of gives more emphasis on the edge. So that is it for this painting. I hope that you enjoyed painting these tropical flip-flops with me. Thanks for watching.